So here we are once again, and today I want to delve into mallets, especially because there's been a few questions on Facebook and the internet recently about mallets. Like, I've got one mallet. What other mallet should I buy? Or what other mallets should I get? And I think that's, especially today, there's so much variety of mallets out there. So many different companies, so many di different types and sizes and shapes and hardness and softness of mallets out there that it can be confusing. So I'm going to do this in a few parts. First, I'm going to start out with kind of hard. I got a black table and black bags. These are my own personal mallets that I'm currently using in my road setup, the setup I take to all my sessions. I'm going to talk about those. Then we'll talk about what I think are the important mallets that everybody should have in their toolkit. So first, let's look at mine. I've got my mallet bag with all my small ones. I'll get that out of the way here. Let's look at the, the large mallets I have. I keep them all in bags to keep them protected because they're expensive to keep the, you know, the fur and that in good shape. So the first one I have, I have a Balter GM2 that I modified and put a fur covering on. The GM2 looks like this. It's a big yarn mallet. It's very heavy. I like it. I think it's a little too hard and gets too much surface noise as it is. So I took one and covered it in fur. I just used a Vic Firth gong mallet recovering kit on this one, which is pretty simple to do. So this is in my toolkit. I like this for specific reasons, especially since I got the Peisty bronze gongs now. Some of the models in the bronze range take a little more oomph, especially like the number two, the number six, the number eight. They take a little more to get going. So this is a really weighted, heavy mallet. And with the fur covering, it's soft. And I like to use this for some of the bronze gongs and bigger gongs, like 32 inch. I've got a 32 inch earth up here. 36 inch wind gong, things like that. Uh, I like to have it. It's, it's the big, big guy in my arsenal. It's got a lot of weight to it, a lot of mass. Next, get this one out. I have a Peisty M5 mallet. This is basically a Sona mallet with a Peisty logo on it. Sona makes most of Peisty's mallets, but this is the wood handled Sona mallet. I really like the wood. This one came with the bronze gong set. Uh, this is nice. It's fairly heavy. It's not as heavy or as big as the modified GM2, but I like it. Again, I think the bronze gongs need a little more muscle to get going. I, at first, didn't understand why they included an M5, because they're just 28-inch gongs. And an M5 is a pretty big mallet, more for like a 32-inch or so. But after playing the bronze gongs, I understood why they included that. It does need something with a little more to it. Next, I have another one that came with the bronze gongs. This is an M4. And you, you can see it's it's a little bit smaller and a little lighter. And if we get all three of them here, you can see a definite progression between them. So I like to have different sizes to really cover different gongs and also different sounds from the same gongs. Like if I really want to open something up, 
the GM2 here will do it. It's heavy, it's big, it's powerful, and I can get a nice full stroke on something and just get that gong to open right up. Now the M4 is a bit lighter, it's a little easier to handle, and it's nice for getting the gong to open up, but not like a big smash, a big crash or something. And to go along with these, I have a smaller one. This is the Chocolin Medium, their GM2. And I like this because it's small, it's a little shorter handle. It's fairly compact. This is a great all-around gong mallet. I love it for just so much on all types of gongs from about 20 inches on up. It's it's great. Even some of the smaller ones, like 16 inches and that, I mean, it's it's versatile. Yet yeah, it'll work on a 32-inch gong, a 36-inch gong, whatever. I plan to get a couple more of these so I can have some here in the studio and have my go-to one for taking out. So let's just get a... a a comparison. Again, you can see the size differences between these. There's a progression going from here to here to here to here. And you know, for me, I like to have these four different sizes because I'm using a wide variety of gongs, different types, nickel silver, a peisty bronze, different shapes. Sometimes I'll throw in a chow or a wind gong or a sun gong. And I like to have a variety to be able to bring out different sounds. So for me, I like to travel with like four larger padded mallets. I think that's real important. Now let's look at my mallet bag here. This is all my smaller mallets and strikers and implements and such. And there's a lot of stuff in here. We'll look at it all and we'll talk about all of it and why I bring it with me. Let's see, there's quite a variety here. Okay. Let me just organize this a little. And we can sort of talk about them. Okay. So, this is a lot of different stuff. Combined with the four other mallets, I bring in quite a few different mallets. A lot of variety, as you can tell. And I think that's real important, is to have the variety of sounds. So let's kind of continue on from the big padded mallets. I guess next down would be my rollers, the GM4 from Balter. Zildjian is remaking them now. Uh, I don't even know what the code numbers are on that, but just Zildjian rollers, so you can find those out there. I like these. They're light and weight. They're balanced real well. And when I'm rolling on the gong, basically getting a sustained sound, I really like these. They're very easy to work with, and they do what I need to do on all different sizes of gongs. So it's a great pair to have. And this is probably still one of my original pairs. I got these right after uh, Balter introduced these. And I was like, wow, these are great. I was really excited that they finally came out with something like this. So I've been using these for probably, uh, I don't know, 10 years, maybe longer, since they, they first came out with them. Next, I have these. These are my modified chime mallets with the heavy felt end, and it's got the, the thin leather end here. These I nor normally use on bell plates and Burma bells. Bell plates on this end, Burma bells on this end. And I like them. They're fairly balanced, 
you get a good swing with them, and they just work. I had the idea for modifying these and did that probably in 2005, 2004. So, and this is the original pair that I modified. So I've had these a long time. They've lasted and they've gone through a lot of music. But generally, like I said, Burma bells, bell plates, um, sometimes bossed gongs, although I'm not currently taking any bossed gongs with me. Uh, right now, I'm just using one bell plate. I've changed up my setup. I used to have three Burma bells and three Ufip Sheng bell plates that I would use these on. And currently, I just have one of the Sheng plates. So I might just cut down to even bringing one of those. Next two, I have a cord wound vibe mallet. It's a medium, but it's fairly hard. And you can see it's a very small head. And then I have a symphonic cymbal mallet. And this is the kind of a medium version. They have two, like a soft and a medium. And this is a medium one. And what I like about this, it's got a fairly big head and it's fairly weighty. So you could strike something and get some power out of it. I have used this on Burma bells sometimes, but currently I'm using them on the Ryan Shelody triangle bells that I have. Those are back in my setup right now. And I love how these work on there. And both of these I've been using on the Peisty Roto sounds. I still haven't found what to me is the ideal mallet for the Roto sounds. This is nice, but sometimes it's a little too hard and harsh, I think. So I'll often use this, which gets a little mellower sound, but I'm still looking for something that's not going to have so much attack on the Roto sounds. But that's what these two are for. Now, in my current setup, I replaced the Shang bell plates with some of my smaller M Bao tune gongs. I have a little pentatonic set. And I'm using these, which are sort of a medium soft yarn wound marimba mallet. I also have a medium, which I always bring. I'll talk about these first. The mediums are great. I use them for singing bowls and rin bowls. I use them for my copper clad Noah bells. I can use them on Burma bells if needed. I use them on the gongs. Uh, they're, they're really versatile. Just having a medium yarn wound marimba, it's a versatile mallet. I use these a lot, but on the tuned gongs, I was finding that just a little too much attack, a little harsh. So you can even see there's a size difference in these. The reds are a little bit bigger. They're a little softer. So I started using the red ones mainly for the tune gongs. I just wanted a little rounder sound that didn't have so much attack to it. I like these a lot for that. I might even go one step, go to more of an extra soft uh, mallet, just because these still have quite a bit of attack. The, the little tune gongs, they, they really can be shrill. And these are, these are the higher octave. So they're only, you know, they're like six, eight inches in diameter. And they can be really shrill with a harder mallet. So I've been experimenting with that as I play out and you know, adjusting things. So these are working out pretty good. I This coming weekend, I think I might bring out the extra soft and try those just to see how that works out. So those are medium and soft marimba mallets. And I have a pair of medium rubber. And you can really see the difference here too. The size of the head compared to the medium yarn wound. It's very small, very compact. And although these are both mediums, these are much harder because it's, it's just bare rubber. 
and they get a real bright sound out of the rin bowls and the singing bowls and the drobu bell and some of my other percussion. I will, if I really need a bright sound on some of the other percussion items like the, the Noah bells or something, I might use these, but probably not because they're a little brittle. I have used them on the gongs. If I really want a bright sound, not, you know, you're not like whacking on them, but just like a light tap in the middle just to get that bell tone coming out or maybe tap on the edge. But these are mainly for Rin and singing bowls and some other bells. Here's a my trusty singing bowl wand I've had for, I don't know, 20 years or something. I've got a whole bunch of them. But this one I like a lot and it tends to work on a lot of different things. I bring this along for the two Drobu bells I have that don't have clappers in them that I play holding them upright like a singing bowl. So I use this wand here. And then Flumi, of course, you know, everybody's into that sort of thing. I tend to bring the bigger set of the Bear Love silicone Flumi with me. These are what, number four, five, six, and six and a half. I like those. They work out really well with the gong setup I have right now. And they get a nice full sort of sound. And as I described in some other videos, I have gongs designated as viola, cello, and double bass gongs. And these flumies, trust me, get that sort of sound out of those instruments. And I've had people afterwards comment about how they could hear cellos and, and things like that. So this is important to me. I like that. I'm more into the deeper drone sounds at the moment, the fuller sounds. I also have the, the upper range of the Bear Love, as well as I've got the Ewans. These are actually the barbecue skewer version that I got at my grocery store. And I've got the Balter Super Rub mallets and that. Those get the much higher tones, the whale sounds, the space sounds, the dolphin sounds, whatever. I'm not doing that currently, so I haven't been bringing them with me. It's a sound I still use, but for the music I'm playing right at the moment, I'm just going for more of the deeper tones. And then I've got various brushes. I've got the flares from Regal Tip. These are just a, a nylon brush. I like them a lot. They, they do come with a split ring so you can close them up and get uh, more of a stick-like sound. But I like to leave them just wide so I just get a real soft sort of sound. These are good for playing on the gongs, for scraping on the gongs and things like that. I really like these a lot, just to give me some variety. You know, all these other mallets here are sort of hard sounds, where this, I mean, it's, a, it's a very soft sort of sound. So I like to use the brushes just to add variety to what I'm doing, bring in something totally different and something very light. I've also got the the broomsticks from Promark. These are the large set. They make small, medium, and large as far as the diameter. These, I think, are an inch in diameter or so. I like these a lot. They also have O-rings so you can open them up more. And they're similar to the flares, but these are actual corn stock. This is nylon, so. you can hear you know there's a, there's a difference there but these sort of things are great to bring in a transition or just a whole change to what you're doing so we've taken a look 
at my personal set of mallets that I'm currently using. But let's get back to that original question. Somebody had asked, I've got a gong and a mallet. What other mallets should I get? And as I said, I mean, there are so many mallets being made today, so many companies, and it's just, it's crazy. It is hard to be out there and try to figure out, well, what do I need? Because there's all this and that. And the funny thing is, when a question like that is asked on Facebook or on the internet or on a forum or something, if you ask 100 people, the chances are you will get 100 different answers. And people will go, oh, you should buy Ollie Hess mallets because they're the best. Uh, that's what I use. Or you should buy Peisty mallets or you should buy this brand or things like that. What I want to talk about is mallets and not about brand because you can pretty much get similar mallets across many, if not all of the brands out there, depending on the mallet you're looking for. So for me to say, you should buy a Peisty mallet because that's what I use, doesn't make a lot of sense. You should buy what's the appropriate mallet that feels comfortable for you, that you like. That's more important. And it could be any brand. So let's look at what I call the four primary mallets that every gong player should own. The first would be two big padded mallets, big and a small. Now, especially if you have more than one gong, the large one should be the appropriate size mallet for the largest gong you own. So if you have a 36 inch gong you're using, you need to have a big padded mallet that's going to activate the 36 and get the full sound out of it. And then let's say you have a, a 30 or a 28 inch, then I would say the next one should be the appropriate size mallet for that gong. And you can mix them up. Of course, you can play the bigger gong with the smaller mallet, the smaller gong with the bigger mallet. But that's what you want to have. If you just have one gong, okay, make sure you have the appropriate mallet size for that gong. 32 inch gong, you need a mallet that will activate a 32 and get its full potential. From there, go to something smaller. Okay, whatever size gong you have, the appropriate mallet and go to something a bit smaller. It gives you a good variety. The big one will give you that full sound. The smaller one will give you a lesser sound, which is desirable in a lot of ways. I have two different setups here. I have my the Peisty M5 and the Chocolin GM4, but I also here's the Vic Firth GB1 and GB2, large, small. So you can go through all sorts of different brands. Pick your favorite brand that you like, get a large and a small padded mallet. And I think that's real important because it gives you two potential sounds there that are going to be different. Big and full, sort of less full, more compact sound with the smaller one. The next is you need some sort of rollers. Again, these are the discontinued Balter GM4 rollers. Uh, Zildjian has reintroduced them under their own Zildjian name. Gongs Unlimited has a nice set of rollers. Uh, most of the big mallet companies make some sort of a roller. You need a nice matched pair for rolling on the gong, for getting that sustained sound. And find something you are comfortable with. I could recommend these to you and you'd take them and go, ah, they're too heavy for me. The handles are too long or something. You wouldn't like them. But find a pair of matched rollers that will work for you. The next would be something in a medium yarn wound marimba mallet. Now you can get all kinds of brands. I happen to play Balter mallets because I'm a Balter artist. So most of my mallets are from Balter. 
but you could get other brands. Gongs Unlimited makes the same sort of thing. Innovative Percussion. I mean, there's all kinds of mallet companies out there today. So a pair of medium yarn mallets. These are great for playing on the edge of the gong, on the face of the gong, using the shaft on the, on the edge of the gong. You can get a lot of different sounds out of a pair like this. And it'll be lighter sounds, much lighter than this. So with these four here, large and small padded, a pair of rollers, and a pair of medium marimba mallets, you have a lot of sound potential on one gong or much more potential on multiple gongs, two or more. So that's what I tell people they should have for the basic kit, the basic mallet kit, those four. Now we are going to look at the five secondary mallets. I think every player should have after the four primary ones. And that would be a pair of medium cord wound vibraphone mallets. These are cord instead of yarn, so they're a little harder and you get a little sharper sound than a medium yarn wound marimba mallet. I think these are nice to have just to give you that extra dimension, a little brighter, a little sharper sound. Now going in the other direction, you should add either a soft or an extra soft pair of marimba mallets. Something that's going to give you much less contact surface noise than the medium ones or the cord wound vibe mallets. Something softer. Gives you a little more variety in sound there. Then you should add some sort of rubber mallets, either a medium or a soft rubber mallet. These are sort of the half ball. You can get a full round ball in a rubber mallet. But something in a, in a rubber mallet, because it's especially the medium ones, they're going to be harder than any of the wrapped mallets here. They're going to be harder than that and give you more attack and give you more sound possibilities than, um, you know, just adding another wrapped mallet. So I think something in, in a medium rubber ball mallet and maybe a soft as an additional one, but at least one of these because it'll give you a very different character than a wrapped mallet. Something else that's nice to add, uh, I've got a couple examples here. These are just some mallet handles without the ball ends on them. And here's a small chopstick. I couldn't find the other one, but something in a, in a light wooden or plastic type handle. I also have some wooden knitting needles. I have some plastic knitting or darning needles, crochet needles, whatever. Something like that is kind of nice to get real lighter sounds out of the gongs and playing on the edge and that. So I think everybody should have something like that because it'll give you attack, but a much softer attack than like a big piece of wood, you know, like hitting the, the edge of your big mallet on the gong. And finally, some sort of brushes. Uh, I happen, as we spoke earlier, I like the, the nylon type brushes like the flares. And I also like the actual corn broomstick type here. You could get the wire drummer brushes, which are nice. I find those a little too light. I don't think they activate the drum enough or the drum. <laughs> I'm thinking drums now. I don't think they activate the gong enough because they're very light. You could also get some, let's see if I have them here, nylon ones. Uh, this must be my other bag. I also have nylon brushes that are a different, a stiffer nylon than this, and they're just permanently fanned out like this. But you should have some sort of brush just to give you that super soft, quiet sound and something you can kind of swish around the edge of the gong or around the face of the gong. So there we go. Those are sort of the five secondary ones, the 
cord wound, medium vibe mallets, soft or extra soft yarn wound marimba mallets, medium or soft rubber mallets, some sort of a stick, knitting needle, crochet needle, whatever, something like that, or wooden, just a handle from a mallet, chopstick, something that's light, very percussive, but it's still lightweight, and then some sort of brushes. Now, if you combine that with the four primary ones of the large and small padded mallets, the rollers, and the medium yarn wand marimba mallets, this is an amazing variety of sounds. So even if you have just one gong, you can get a whole universe of sounds with these mallets. Now, if you have two, three, four, five, six gongs, that just multiplies that. And you have so many different sound possibilities here for these basic nine types. And, you know, one in one hand, one in the other. You don't have to always hold the same thing. So you can really be creative. But this is, I think, the basic gong player's arsenal right here, these nine types. Now, I'm not going to talk about flumies because I pretty much covered it in the first part of this. Uh, if you want the whale sounds, the dolphin sounds, the space cosmic sounds, buy smaller flumi, whatever brand you like and you'll get those real high-pitched, squeaky whale sounds. If you want the deeper drone sounds, then you need to get the bigger ones, like the big bear love ones. And that's, you know, with, with flumies, that's basically it. I have a wide variety of them. Like I said, I do have the bear love ones. I have the Balter Super Rubs. I have a lot of them that I've made myself out of different types of Super Balls and that. I have other ones that people have given to me, and they each have their own unique sound. So for different things, for different types of music, different requirements, I will use different flumi. But that's such a wide open area. And you really have to define what type of sound you like, especially with what type of gong you have. Some flumi work better on this gong, some work better on that gong. So. Uh, I could do a whole hour on flumies and things like that, but do your homework. Try things out. Find out what other people like. Talk to people like me and other people. Well, what do you use on this type of gong? You know, especially if you go, I've got a 32 inch Peisty gong, earth gong, or symphonic or planet gong. And you do too. What kind of flumi do you like on that? I think for Flumi, that's what you need to do is really research into it because there's so many different types. There's so many different types of rubber and silicone and you know different compounds of materials out there and different handles. There's even different shapes. Some are egg shapes, some are round. Some of them are like balls cut in half. A lot of different, you know, variations in Flumis. So you really need to just sort of define what sort of sound you want, A, what type of gongs you have, B, and then what will get those sounds out of the gongs you have. So let's move on to just extra mallets. I mean, if you're just looking for some other stuff, maybe you find some stuff on sale somewhere, or, you know, you just got money and you want to buy some more mallets. Uh, a pair of wind gong mallets are great. These are the Balter ones. Now they're Zildjian wind gong mallets because Zildjian bought Balter like three, four years ago. These are nice. They have a, a wooden handle, a fairly big head with a big plane surface. That's what I like about these. These are good as sort of small light rollers. They're good for single strokes. These are especially nice on small gongs. So if you've got something in like a 15, 16, 18 inch chow or wind gong or something, these are really great on there just for a single stroke. Like I said, these make good light rollers. I've used these a lot for 
so many different things on so many different gongs. So a nice pair of what they call wind gong mallets. And a lot of different companies make these. Then I would say maybe something else in a, some sort of a marimba mallet. Now these are the Balter Titanium series. And what I like about these, they're very weighted. They're very heavy. So for the size of the head, there's a lot of weight. So I can really activate a gong or a bell or percussion with these because there's a lot of weight there as opposed to a regular marimba mallet. Some of those are, are fairly light. This is a really heavy mallet. So I like to have these just for certain things and sometimes certain instruments. You're looking to get a sound if you're in the recording studio or that and you're trying to find a certain sound. I will bring a couple bags or boxes of mallets with me so I can experiment. But something like this, just a, a heavier weight marimba mallet. And these I think are about a medium soft. Something most people won't think of, this is a poly ball and mallet. Normally used on like crotales or orchestra bells, things like that. They're very hard and very bright. I like to play them on the gong, like in the center or on the face or on the edge, and it's all attack. Now that sound might not be usable everywhere, but it's a nice alternative to sound to have. And people will say, well, they're really hard. Aren't you going to hurt the gong? Well, if you notice, I wasn't like whacking the gong and I never would with something like this. These are for tapping only. And by tapping them, you get the really bright, higher tones out of your gong. Here's something in a felt mallet. This is kind of your basic singing bowl type mallet. These are great. I mean, you can use them on singing bowls. They're great on gongs and percussion too. For me, when I, when I see mallets, I, I don't assign any instrument to them. To me, it is just a mallet. Okay, this is a marimba mallet. But to me, it's just a mallet. I can use it on marimba. I can use it on vibes. I can use it on my Noah bells, I can use it on my tuned gongs, I can use it on all my other gongs behind me, I can use it on singing bowls, rin bowls, wood blocks, you know, all kinds of stuff. So to me, I don't pay attention to the name. That's just a guideline. I, I look more at what the mallet can do on the instruments I own. So just a hard felt singing bowl type mallet works great on a lot of things and what's nice about these is it's fairly light and this one has a plastic handle which is very flexible so it, it's a very light stroke and the ever popular timpani mallets these are just the general balter or excuse me vic firth uh, t1 general timpani mallets it's a hard felt head with some piano felt sewn over it they work fine. Uh, not my favorite thing for a gong, but you know, because there's really no mass there, there's no weight to it at all. And I just don't think it draws out the best sound, but you can use them. And you know, if you really want a light sound, these are perfect. If you want to play very quiet and very lightly, a pair of just general timpani mallets. Now here's a Balter GM1. It's a very heavy yarn wound mallet. So it's got a small plane surface. It's very heavy and it's actually very hard. So you're going to get a lot of attack, a lot of articulation out of this. Very nice on big bossed gongs like Gamelon gongs. Nice on any of these gongs behind me. And it's just going to get a very quick kind of brash sound out of things. Sometimes that might be what you want. And here is a pair of bass drum rollers for concert bass drum if you're playing in the symphony orchestra. What I like about these, it's got a big handle that's very comfortable to hold and they're really light. Where the regular rollers 
have a lot of weight in the head, these are extremely light. So they're very nice to roll with if you want a really light, sort of easy, soft sound. Or even just using one as a very soft striker on your gong, because there's, there's nothing there. I mean, there's just, they're so lightweight. But if you're playing a big concert bass drum with a very thin head on it, you don't want a lot of weight. You just want to activate that head and get it vibrating. Where the gong is much thicker and heavier than a drum head. So these are great if you want something in a very soft and light sound. Just a pair of, these are just general concert bass drum mallets. And again, you can get all these things from various different brands. Do your homework. Go on the internet. Go to percussion sites like Steve Weiss Music or the Memphis Gong Chamber, Gongs Unlimited, The Gong Shop, uh, Percussion Source, Lone Star Percussion, you know, any of the big drum stores, and just look up mallets and research them. See what the differences are. And, you know, take a chance and buy, buy a couple pair. You know, for a hundred bucks, you could probably get three, maybe four pair of, you know, some basic marimba, vibe, timpani mallets, you know. So buy, you know, buy three or four pair of mallets, add them to your collection, work with them, find out what they can do with your gongs. And you might go, yeah, these, these aren't doing it for me. Okay, well, then those aren't. But then you might say, ah, but these gong mallets, you know, these wind gong mallets are great. I love what they do on my gongs. I love how they feel in my hands. And, you know, that's the thing. You have to take chances because you, should, you can't really go try out mallets on gongs. It's, it's, there aren't any places to really do that and try out a wide array unless you go to, like, uh, the Percussive Art Society convention or the NAM show or something. You might be able to do more experimentation with mallets, but usually the mallets are here and gongs are somewhere else, so you're kind of stuck that way. And that's what I had to do with a lot of them. I just played them on different instruments and imagined how are they going to feel on a gong, because I know how the gong feels. And I also know how the other instruments, the marimbas or a cymbal or something, feels. So I kind of judged, yeah, I think uh, I like this. This is does this on this instrument, I can see where it has possibilities for the gong. And then I got them. Okay. There's kind of a big overview of mallets that I use and what I think, and again, this is my opinion, what I think most gong players should have in their mallet bag and their toolkit. You might think differently. I'm sure if you talk to somebody else, they would have different ideas about what mallets you should own. So use this as a guideline and explore for yourself. Find out what you like. What I see is most important about mallets is they're personal. I mean, if you think about it, this is connection between our hands and the gongs or bells or bowls or whatever instruments we're playing. This is the direct connection. So you want something you are comfortable holding, something that feels good in your hand and makes the sound you want. So it's a very personal thing. Somebody else could come and do the exact same video and they might have quite a different idea as far as what mallets you should have. So it's up to you, as everything is. Use this as a guideline, do your homework, do some experimentation, Take a chance and buy a few pair of different things and try them out. Hey, you, know, you buy a pair of mediums and you might go, oh, these are too hard. Okay, then maybe you want to get a pair of soft or extra soft or something like that. And that's, I mean, that's how I did it. You just, you got to experiment. And then pretty soon you end up with all kinds of mallets. Mm -hmm. Right here's my mallet bag all full, half full because I took a lot of them out for this. And I must have probably six or seven big bins full of mallets, but that's from collecting them over the course of a 50-year career. So 
I have tons of mallets. So thanks for watching. We will see you next time.